Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom and welcome to today's Daf Yomi Nida Daf Samachtes. We're on Samachtes Amad Beis, two lines from the bottom. Iboy Lehu. The Gemara is a Shaila. The Gemara Shaila is referring back to the Halacha and the Mishnah that a Zav and a Zav are required to do a Hefsek Tahara, a Bedika to verify that there's no more Tuma. The following day they begin their Sfiras. Shivan Akim, where they are boidik for seven consecutive days, after which they are toivel and complete their tahara. In the case where they only did abdikas Risha and Yishvi, the first and seven of the seven days, and the days in between they did not do a bdika, there was machlaikas in the Mishnah, according to Rabbi Lezar, that is considered to be enough to establish a cheskas tahara, and it is considered as though he did a full bdikas Shivan Akim. Rabbi Shua holds, the only days that are counted are the first and seven days, the actual days that Abdika was done. Rabbi Kiva says, no, the only day that we count is the most recent day, the Yom Shvi Bulvat. What's going to be in the following case? Where he did Abdika's Rishon Ushmini, not Rishon Ushvi, but rather the first and the eighth day. Now the eighth day is already past the set of Shiva Nakim. Will that be considered sufficient according to Rabbi Lezim? Ibailu, ask the Gemara. Hazav, Hazava, Shabbat Ku Atzman, Yom Rishan, Yom Shmini, Matatar. They did a proper Badika on the Yom Rishan and the Yom Shmini. Vashar Hayamim, Leibatku. And they did not do a Badika on the rest of the days. The Rablezer Mao. According to Rablezer, what is the Allah? Tchilasan, Vesaifan, Vainan. Does Rablezer require the beginning of the Shivan Akim as well as the end of the Shivan Akim? Specifically, when he did a bdika on day number one and day number seven, those two days will combine to be considered a proper bdika shivanakim since he has the beginning of the shivanakim, he has the end of the shivanakim. Therefore, it is considered as though he was bdik throughout the shivanakim. Vahacha, in our case, where he did a bdika on the first and the eighth day, tchila sanika, certainly you have the first, you have the beginning of the shivanakim. Saifan laka. But you do not have the end of the Shivanakim. The eighth day is already past the Shivanakim and will not be considered sufficient even according to Rebelezer. A Dilma, or perhaps Chilas and Afavish Ein Saifan, is enough to have a Bdika in the beginning of the Shivanakim, although you don't have one at the end. Now Rashi explains that this Gemara Shaila is specifically directed at Shitas Rebelezer and not at the other Shitas. Why is that so? It says Rashi, according to Rebbe Kiva, it's simple. The only day that was counted was the most recent day, the Yom Shvi. So certainly in this case, the only day that will count is the Yom Shmini. Why? Because we're concerned perhaps there was a Re'iya in between the two Badikas. So therefore, according to Rabbi Kiva, there's no discussion. Certainly the only day that counts is the actual Yom Abdika, the most recent Yom Abdika, which is the Yom Hashmini. According to Rabbi Shua as well, Rabbi Shua holds that the days that are counted are the actual Yom Abdika, the Yom Rishain and the Yom Shvi. He needs to add another five days to complete the seven. Explains Rashi. Rabbi Shua will only hold that way in the case of a Rishon and a Shvi, where the days can actually combine with each other. We combine the beginning and the end of the Shivanakim to be considered a Bdika Shivanakim. So, according to Rabbi Shua and Rabbi Kiva, there's no discussion in the Gemara regarding this case of a Bdika Rishon and Shmini. The Gemara Shail is specifically only according to Rabbi Lazar, who says, Harihen becheskas tahara. He uses terminology of cheskas tahara, which is a very general term, that the first day and the seventh day provide a cheskas tahara. So perhaps we could ponder whether he requires the first and the seventh day, or perhaps it's sufficient to have only the first day. That itself will be considered enough to give him a cheskas tahara, since he established tahara on the beginning of the seven days. That would be considered a proper cheskas tahara that we can assume that anything that happened afterwards was simply a resumption of this cheska, a continuation of the cheskas tahara, and it is as though he did a proper bdikas shiva nakim, even though we don't know for sure, we haven't verified for certainty. So there's a machlekes amiroim in this regard. Omarav, he he, it is the same. Both cases are the same. Whether it's one and seven, whether it's one and eight, it makes no difference. Tchilasan afal pishen seifan. As long as they did a Badika at the beginning of the Shiva Nikim, although there was no Badika at the end, it is enough according to Shitas 
Rebbe Lezer, we don't need an actual verification during the Shivan Akim, a cheskas tahara, which was already established at the outset of the Shivan Akim, is sufficient. Rebbe Chanin Omar, no, tchilason v'soifan binan, we are required to at least have the beginning and the end, meaning number one and number seven, according to Rebbe Lezer. Hach, in our case, tchilason ikka, certainly you have the beginning, you have number one, soifan leka, but you don't have the end of the Shivan Akim since day number eight is already past the set of seven days. Meisve, we have a brisa, a kasha, which will be a, 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 a kasha on Rav. V'shoven, both all Tanoim agree. V'zav, 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 In the case of a Zav and a Zava that will bite themselves day number one and day number eight. And they found themselves to be tar. She'ein lahem el ha'shmini v'lavad. The only day that will count will be num- day number eight. Man Shavan, who is the Bryas referring to? Which Shitas? Bryas says they agree. Who's they? Lav, Rebelez, Rebishor. Is it not referring to Rebelez and Rebishor? Meaning that in this case Rebelez will agree, will admit to Rebishor that it is not considered as though there was a Bdikas, Sphira, Shivanakim, since the first and the eighth are too far apart. So this would be a Raya proof to Rebchanina that even Rebelez is only speaking about a case of one and seven and not one and eight. Dr. Gemara, loy, no. Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Kiva. When the Bryce says, Vishav, and they agree, the Bryce is referring to Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Kiva. The Rabbi Shua will agree in this case to Rabbi Kiva that it is not considered the B'dika Shiv and Akim, and they do not count, merely the eighth day will count as day number one of Sphere Shiv and Akim, and this will be. Uh, 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 a Shavan, who will, uh, he will be going along, following along with the Shita of Rebbe Kiva, who holds as well as the only day that counts is the most recent Yaim B'dika, which is day number 8. However, according to Rebbe Lezer, even in this case of day 1 and 8, it will be deemed sufficient to be considered as if there was a Dikas Shiva Naki. Says the Gemara, Omer of Sheshis, Omer of Yimur, Ba'ab Omer Rav. Another halacha on the name of Rav, which will be an additional, a greater Chiddush, of Rav, above and beyond the original Chiddush. Rav was mechalash to us, that, the coin to Rebbe Lezer, tchilasun afa pishain seifan. Here comes even a greater Chiddush. Nida she'efrisha betahar b'shlishi shalom. Nida, that separated herself, she did a hefsek tahara on her third day. Seifrasai l'minyan shiva nekim. She can count that day as day number one of her shiva nekim. Ask the Gemara, Nida, Sphere Lomali, since one does a Nida require Shiva Nekim, Ela'ema must be Zava Shefrisha Batahara, Ushlisha Shalom. If a Zava was Mafesh Batahara, she did a Badika and a Hefsek Tahara on her third day of Re'iyah, and now she needs to do Badika Shiva Nekim, Sefra Se Luminian Zainakim, she could count that day, the third day, meaning she saw day number one, number two, and number three. On the day number three, she did a Hefsek Tahara. That is already considered as if. Day number one for her Sfiras Minyan Zayinikim. Amalei Rashesh is of Riyam Rehaba How can you say that? Rav ke kusoy amalei Is Rav then following the Shita of the Kusim? Now the Kusim have erred in this regard. They held that the day of Hefsek Tahir is already considered as day number one of Shivan Akim. We don't follow that Shita. So then could you say that Rav is stating as halacha based on the Shita of the Kusim? The Amri Yoim Shepisek is by the day that there was a Hefsek. Seifra, Sey Laminian Zion? How could that be? It must be that Rav is saying something else. Kika Amar Rav Levar Mishlishi. Aside from the third day, aside from the day of Hefsek Tara, you need to count Shiva and Akim. Ask Gemar Bar Mishlishi if that's what Rav is teaching us. Pshita, that's Pasha, everybody knows that. That the Shiva and Akim only begin the day following the Hefsek Tara. Leitzricha must be speaking about the following case. Kigoyin the leibat kachvi. Rav is speaking about a case where she didn't do a bedika until the seventh day. She only did her bedika on day number seven. And Rav is teaching us a chiddush that although there was no bedika performed until day number seven, that is enough to give her tahara. That is enough to establish a retroactive cheskas tahara. That we can assume just as day number seven is tahara, so too all the days leading into day number seven with Tahar, and she has her Sfiras, Minyan, Shivanakim. So basically we have two Chiddush of Rav. The initial Chiddush of Rav was 
Chilasa and Afa Bishain Seifen. Day number one is enough. Now Rab's adding even a greater Chiddush. Even day number seven is enough. Seifen, Afa Bishain Chilasa. Vashmin and Rab is teaching us Hasam in the first Chiddush, Chilasa and Afa Bishain Seifen. Vahacha, now he's adding another Chiddush. Kamash Mulan, he's teaching us Seifen, Afa Bishain Chilasa. I would think, who says such a great Chiddush? Who says that in the case of Seifen, Afa Bishain Chilasa? That is enough. Ma'al the time I would think tchilas and afu b'shein soifan. Granted, in the case where there was a b'dika on day number one, which is tchilas in the beginning of the shivan akim, that is enough. Who darmin over there will give him a chazaka cheskas tar the kmina cheskayu. We put him back on the cheskas tar. We establish the cheskas tar, and all the days subsequent to the first day are continuous. The first day is cheskas tar. Avos soifan, but in the latter case where there was a b'dika only at the end of the shivan akim, soifan afu b'shein tchilasan. Loi, that is a tremendous chiddush, and that certainly would not be considered kamash malon. So Rav is teaching us a chiddush. Yes, in the case of soifan avo bishen tchilasan, that too is considered to be enough to give the zav a cheskas tahara and be considered as if he was boidik the complete shiva nikim. So in conclusion, Rav is telling us a tremendous chiddush that according to shitas of Lezer, we don't need actual verification. Ches Kastahar is enough, whether it's day number one without anything else, or whether it's day number seven without anything else. Now, if you think for a second, Rabbi Chanina's Chiddush wasn't as great. Rabbi Chanina said that one is required to have Tchilas and Vasayfan, meaning, even according to Rabbi Lezer, we need actual verification. We need Svur Mifanenu. We need to know that there was no Dam. We need to know that there was no Tumah. Rabbi Lezer is Machadish leniency that even by doing abdika on both tail ends of the Shiva Nakim, the beginning and the end, they sort of combine to give us, to constitute a din abdika on the full seven days, and it is considered as though there was an actual verification during the full seven days. However, according to Rav, who only requires one or the other, either the beginning or the end, that certainly could not be considered as an actual bona fide verification, that is merely a cheska star, as a presumption, even so, Rav holds that is enough to be considered Shiva Nikim. Ask the Gemara, how could Rav say that? Aini, Vahoki also Rav and Rav Nikim. Omar, he said, Masa Rabbi Yisra Chanina Toya. Rabbi Yisra Chanina asked the Kasha from a Brisa of a woman who gave birth, and she is mistaken, she has erred, she's confused as to um, her status. I'm not sure what he was asking. This is a sugi mentioned earlier in the Masechta, but what is pertaining to our Gemara is as follows. This Isha was a Yeledes. And we know that a Yeledes, for instance, a Yeledes Zohar, has Shiva Yimei Tumah, which is considered to be Anida. After the seven Yimei Tumah, she is Toivel, Balayla, and she is Tar. Now, if she is a Yeledes Bezoiv, if she was a Zava as well, then she has the Halachas of a Zava. Now, the main difference between a Zava and Anida is Anida sees Dam, she is Tamah for seven days, and she is Toivel the night following. A Zava, if she sees one day, she is Shem Yom Knegadim. The next day, she has to verify that there was no dam, and she is Toivel on that day. We employ the halacha of Mixas Hayim Kekuloi. If she sees that day as well, she needs to be Shem the next day. She needs to verify the next day that there was no dam. That being the case, she will be Toivel that day, Tvila Zava Biyoyim again. These two cases are considered to be a Zava Ktana. If she sees for three days in a row, she is a Zava Gdoila. That requires Bdikas, Sfiras, Shiva, Nakim. She needs to be Baidik for seven days following the three days. And then she's, she is Tevil on the last day of Shiva, Nakim. Again, Tvila, be a mama. Now Rashi explains that Gemari is following the sheet of Tvila, Bizmana, Mitzvah. One is Machir to be Tevil at the exact time that he's eligible to be Tevil. Meaning, Azava, if she becomes eligible to be Tevil at midday, she needs to be Tevil by day. She can't wait, she can't delay until the night. Anida, however, is required to be Tevil, Dafka specifically at night, at the completion of the Yimei Nidas. Now, in this case of Yeledes who arrived and is unsure as to her status, the Gemara says, Vakaimelon, Shavua Kama, the first week that she came, the Asil Kama, Bilei Lusa, Matbilinala, we are Tevil her at night. Since we're not sure when the Yimei Nidas have completed, so every night for the next seven nights we'll be Tevil her just in case. We have to cover all the possibilities. Perhaps today was the last day of her Yimei Nida, she's table tonight. Perhaps today is the first day of her Yimei Nida, so she needs to be table night number seven. So in total, it is seven Tvilas. 
Biyamama loimat filinila. However, during the day, during the daytime, she does not have to do any tefillahs. Meaning, we don't take into consideration the possibility that she is a zava. If she would have been a zava, she would have been a leders bezoiv. She needs to do a badika of shivanakim and be tevil by day. We don't do that. Why don't we do that? We don't do a tefillah be mama. Why? Because since we're not sure, she doesn't know if she did any sphira. And therefore, we don't have an exact, we don't have an, an actual knowledge that it was a sphira. And therefore, this, there's no din sphira nikim. It's as if she made no sphira. And she can't do any tefillah until she actually goes and does shiva nikim b'faneinu. Now, if you hold that one is not required to do sphira b'faneinu, one is not required to do sphira in our presence, we don't have to have an actual knowledge and a verification of the bedika. According to Rav Shita, that that is not required. So in the case of an Isha, why wouldn't we have to take into consideration that perhaps she was a Zava, and she did partial a full Sphira Shiva Nakim, and she's holding by some point in her Shiva Nakim, and she needs to do us a Tvila Biyamama to account for the Halacha of Tvila Bezava Bezava. Biyamama Nam in Tvilina. She needs to be tevil during the day as well. Dimo yeledes zacher bezoivi va'avdel asfurin. Perhaps she was a yeledes bezoiv. In addition to being a nida, she was also a zav, and she already did somewhat of a sfira. And now she's up to the the, the yayimat vila. She has to be tevil. So why do we ignore that? Why do we only be tevil her at night and not by day? Elolash mami no. It seems pretty obvious from here. Be'inon svirim fanenu. She needs to have sfiras. Of, of Nikiyam in our presence, meaning we have to have actual verification of the Sphira. It can't be just presumptions, it can't be just Chazakas and Sfekas. We need to have an actual knowledge that there was a Sphira here, there was a Bedika here. And only those days will count as the Shiva Nikiyam. In our case of Atoya, since that is not the case, there is no actual knowledge of a Sphira of a Bedika, therefore she has no Din, no Chiv of a Tfilas Zav until she does the Sphira in, in a bona fide. Um, Clarity and the fanaino in our present that we know that there was a vidika. So this would be a stira to Rav. Says the Gemara, Valav mi Akiva no Kiva. Sure, that price is found in the Shita of Rabbi Kiva. And we know that Rabbi Kiva already, in our mission, we know that Rabbi Kiva holds that we need the actual verification. I'm not following Rabbi Kiva Shita. My Shita, my Chiddush, Rav's two Chiddushim, of Tchilasan, Av Vishain Saifan, of Saifan, Av Vishain Tchilasan. Which implies that we do not need Sfurin and Bifonenu, we don't need actual knowledge. That is following Shitas of Lazar. This Brisa is going according to the opinion of Rabbi Kiva. That has nothing to do with my Chiddush. Now, how do we know that there is such a Shita, that such a Shita actually exists, that anybody out there holds that one is not required to have Sfurin Bifonenu? How do we know that the Rabbonon, Loibainu, and Sfurin Lifonenu, the Snan? We've learned as follows. Toya, an Isha who's erred, who's erred, who's confused. She doesn't know where she's holding. She says, Sha'amra, Yom Echa, Tami Re'isi. I've seen one day, I had one Re'iya, but I'm not exactly sure if it was during the Yimei Nida, and I'm Tami for seven days. I'm not sure if it was the Yimei Ziva, and I need to do as if Shem Eri Shem Kineged Yom and be table by day. I'm not sure. So what do we do with her? Says the Gemara, Matbil and Oisa test Vilas. She needs to be table nine tefillahs. Zayin lenida, utrei leziva. Nine of them are for the yimei nidas, and two to cover the possibility of a zava, a shemer yisrael k'neged yom. Since she only saw one day, so one thing we know for sure, she's not a zava gedola. That's ruled out. We still, we're still not sure if she is a nida, and requires tvila balayla after the completion of the shivas yimei nida. Again, we don't even know when those Yimei Nida have begun and when they will end. Therefore, she needs to undergo seven Tvilas. She needs to be Tevil tonight, the next night, and the following night for seven nights to cover all the possibilities of the ending of the Yimei Nidas. Perhaps today is the last day of her Nidas. Perhaps today is the first day of her Nida. Therefore, she needs to do seven Tvilas Belayla. In addition, she needs to do two Tvilas Biyayim. Say she arrived on a Friday, midday. In that case, we have a suffix. 
maybe she saw yesterday, be Zivasa, and today was her Sfiras Yoyim Echad, she was a Shemer Yoyim Kinegadim, and today she needs to be Toyo, or perhaps she saw today, and tomorrow she's Sefer Yoyim Kinegadim, and tomorrow she will be Toyo for the Zava. So we need to do seven Tvilas Belayla, and two Tvilas Beyayim. Now Rashi explains, this is all good and true if she came be mama, if she arrived during the day, but if she arrives at night, that actually adds another tefillah for the Yimei Nida, because if she came, say, Friday night, perhaps her Yimei Nida began right now, which is actually tomorrow, which is actually Shabbos, and therefore she needs to wait another seven days to be toivel at the end of those seven days for the Yimei Nidusa, which began on Shabbos. So aside from tonight, where we're toivel her belayla, because perhaps tonight was the last day of her Yimei Nidas, we are also chayshish that perhaps Shabbos is the first day of Yimei Nidais, and she, she needs to be toivel another seven days, in total of eight tefillahs belayla for the Yimei Nidusa, and in addition to the two Yimei Zava, like we mentioned earlier. So she needs to do ten tefillahs in total. So again, if she arrives during the day, there are nine total, seven for Nida, two for Zava. If she arrives at night, there is ten total, eight for Nida, and two for Zava. But, says the Bryce, Ben Ashmashes, Tommy Reisi. She says, Listen, I saw one day, but I saw Ben Ashmashes, which is a Suffolk day, Suffolk night. In that case, she needs a whole bunch more. Matbil and also Yud Alev Tfilis. She needs to have 11. Ask the Gemara Yud Alev Mavid Tayo. How does that make sense? Why would she need 10, 11 Tfilis? Amar of Yerim Yudifta Koin Shabbos Lafaneinu Ben Ashmashes. We're speaking about that she arrived to us during the time of Ben Ashmashes. In that case, we don't know if she saw right now. We don't know what right now is. Is it, does it belong to Friday? Does it belong to Shabbos? In that case, we have to add another day, meaning we we're adding another possibility. If Ben Hashemashas has a din of Shabbos, and her ear actually took place during this present, this exact Ben Hashemashas that she came to us, in that case, the Yom Maria is actually Shabbos. She needs to be Shemir Yayim Kinegad Yayim on Sunday, Mitayil on Sunday. So that adds another day, which makes the Tvila Ziva instead of two, and adds another Tvila of Ziva via Mama. So, in addition to the eight Tvilas of Nida, she has to have another three Tvilas via Mama to cover the possibilities of Ziva. Again, Kigon Shabbos Lafaneinu Ben Ashmashes. She arrived during Ben Ashmashes. In that case, the Havitam Nila Nida, but to last, Ziva. So you have a cheshman, you have a calculation of 11, because 8 are to address the whole gamut of, of possibilities regarding the Yimei Nida. Again, perhaps today is the last day of Yimei Nida, and therefore she's table tonight. Perhaps tonight is the first day of Yimei Nida. Now tonight is really technically Shabbos already. So Shabbos is the first Yimei Nida, and she needs to undergo 7 Tvilas until until the, the, the night after the seven days be that began on Shabbos, which is actually on Friday night. So really, it's from Friday to Friday for a total of eight tvilois, Balela, eight tvilois that have to take place specifically at night. But Tlas Ziva. And she needs to undergo three tvilois to cover all the possibilities of the Yimei Ziva. Because she arrived in Ashmashas. Now we have one suffix, maybe Ben Ashmashas is really still Friday, still a din of Yom. Now, maybe she saw yesterday, Yom Echad, and today, Friday, was the day that she was Shem Yom Kineged Yom, and she's Mechayi to be Tevil today. Now, perhaps the Ben Hashemashes is still Friday, so she quickly has to run to the Mikvah and be Tevil for Friday. Now, perhaps she saw on Friday, and that would require Tevilah the next day, on Shabbos, so she has to be Tevil, be Mama, on Shabbos. Perhaps Ben Hashemashes has already a din of Shabbos, and her Ria actually took place on this exact time, this Ben Hashemashes, which means that her Ria actually took place on Shabbos. That would be Mechaiva to be Shem Yom Kinegad Yom on Sunday, and be Tevil during the day on Sunday. So you have a total of three Tevilois, be a mama for the Zav, for a total of 11 Tevilois. So this is the first part of the Brisa. So far, so good. Continues the Brisa. Loi Risi Kal Ikar, she says, listen, I didn't see anything. In that case, Matbil no is a test of tefillahs. She needs to be table a total of 15 tefillahs. Now, how does that make sense? It sounds pretty absurd. Amarava, hai din eloi daina. Such a din which is not really a proper din. You know who does this din? Dayani begalchi. 
in, in Galchi, in a place in Stoim, over there they do such a dintar. For instance, for example, of one of the uh, very profound um, decisions, halachic decisions that they would come up with in Stoim was as follows. The Isle Torah say, suppose somebody owned an ox, Liri Chadyema. See, they rotated in Stoim. Everybody had a chance to graze the, the flock. Somebody who owned an ox, he would have to be a raya for one day. The last lay to raw, but if somebody was unfortunate, didn't have any ox, he would have to be raya lirit me. He would have to be a raya for two days. So, it was if chamastavr. They worked, uh, you know, uh, uh, reverse logic there. Isram aluchad yasam of Amalta. There was a poor boy, an orphan, the son of a almona, of a widow. So he didn't own any behemoths. Yahavali Turi, they took advantage of him and they gave him their oxen to grace. See the smart boy, look what he did. Azal Naksinu, he shafted them. And when he, when he um, uh, took off the hide, he said, listen guys, we have a system here in Stoim. The one that owns the oxen, he's uh, at a disadvantage. The one that doesn't own, he is preferred. Amaluhu, he told him like this. This is the way I'm going to work things. The is Torah, if somebody owns an ox, Lishkol Chad Mashcha. He can take one oil, he can take an hide, one hide. The last Lay Torah, if somebody doesn't own any oxen, Lishkol Trey Mashchi, he can take two. Amr Lay, what's going on in Maya the Amris? What are you talking about? Amr Lusa replied to them, Soif Dina Ketchilas Dina. The end of the din is similar to the beginning. Do you remember what you told me then? Tchilas Dina, the beginning of the din, Lav Man the last Lay Odif. Somebody who doesn't have, he's preferred. Safety in the Navi. So to right now at the end, Mandalas Layadif. Somebody who doesn't have is preferred. And therefore I rule that whoever does not own any oxen, he will get, he will receive double portion of the hides of the behemoths. Says Rava, we can compare it to our case. Hachanami, Ma Hechada Amra, Reisi. When in the case where she says, I did see, Sagi Lay. When the woman comes and says, you know what, I saw one day, so either it's 9 or it's 11. When she says, I haven't seen anything. It's reverse logic. How can you say in that case she'll be worse off and have to be told 15 times? Doesn't make any sense. You must interpret the b'raisa as follows. You must um, sort of tweak the lashon of the b'raisa. Certainly she saw, I saw, but I don't know how many times I saw. I may have seen once, I may have seen twice, I may have actually seen three times and become a Zavag Doyla, which requires Shivan Akim. That's her first Shaila. First suffix is, I don't know how many I saw. Her second Shaila is, I don't know when I saw. In that case, we need to cover many more possibilities. She needs to be toivel 15 tefillis. How's that? Oh, say, come on, be a mama. If she arrived to us by day, yavinela shevlenida, then she's toivel 7 tefillis um, during the 7 upcoming nights to cover all possibilities of nida. Perhaps today is the last day of her, her nida. She needs to be toivel tonight. Perhaps it is only the first day of her yimei nidais. And she has to wait until the seven days, and then we toivel then. So for the next seven nights, she'll be toivel to cover the tefillahs of a nida. V'tamni leziva. In addition to the seven tefillahs of nida, she also needs to do eight tefillahs to cover all the possibilities associated with ziva. For instance, perhaps today is the last day of Yimei Ziva. She needs to be toivel today. Perhaps today is the day of Ria. She actually saw today, thereby making this the third day of her Ria's of Azavag Deila. She needs to have Sektahara today and only begin her Shiva Nakim tomorrow and be Taival only in eight days. So she needs to do eight Tvilas starting from today to eight Tvilas be a mama for a total of 15 Tvilas. So that's if she comes by day. Asoy Kaman Bilay Lusa. But if she only arrives at night, in that case, so we have to add another tefillah for nidas because perhaps today was the last day of the main nida. She needs to be at night. Perhaps 
now is the beginning of a Yemei Nida, meaning tomorrow is really the first day of a Yemei Nida, and she needs, to wait, she needs to wait another seven days to be toivel for that. So in total it's eight Tvilois Belayla. But in that case, Veshevla Ziva, she'll only have seven Tvilois for Ziva. Ask the Gemara, how's that, how's that so? How do we deduct, what did we lose a Tvila for Ziva? Ziva Tamra Bayi. We just mentioned before, we calculated that even for Ziva she's required to make eight tefillahs for, for Ziva. Why is that? Once again, because if today is the last day of her Shiva Nikim, she needs to be titled today. The same thing tomorrow, the same thing the day following that. And at worst case, today was the last day of her Re'iyah, and her Shiva Nikim only begin tomorrow. In that case, she'll be titled only in eight days. So she needs a total of eight tefillahs starting from today, eight tefillahs for your mama. So how can you say that if she arrives at night, she only needs seven? Ella, you must say, Eidi vi Eidi, in both cases. Regardless of when she arrives, whether she arrives at night, whether she arrives by day, Shev le Nida, Vatam Ziva, you have a total of 15, seven for Nida, seven Tefillahs Balayla, to cover the Nida possibilities, and in addition, you need eight Tefillahs Biyamama, to cover the Ziva possibilities. Ask the Gemara on that. Bilei Lusaf, she arrives at night. Tamne Lenida boy. We need eight for Nida, as we mentioned earlier. So how can you say that regardless of when she arrives, she only needs seven for Nida? Says the Gemara, you're right. So why then did the Brises say 15? The Brises should have, should have um, uh, articulated that if she arrives by day, it's a total of 15. Seven for Nida, eight for Ziva. If she arrives at night, it's a total of 16. 8 for Nida and 8 for Ziva. Says the Gemara, you're right. Ziva the Psikale, Ziva the 8 Tvilas of Ziva, which are firm, which are set uh, um, amounts. The Loishna ki Asa Kaman be Mama. Loishna ki Asa Kaman be Since regarding Ziva, it's irrelevant when she came, whether she came at night, whether she came by day, there will still be a total of 8 Tvilas. Chashele. That's why the Brisa um, counted it as a set, as a set amount. Nida the Leipzigale. However, regarding Nida, it fluctuates. The Chiyasa come on Bilei Lusa by Tamni. If she arrives at night, then you need eight. Be a mama like a by Tamni. But if she arrives by day, you don't need eight. You only need seven. So therefore, like a Chashula. Therefore, the Brisa didn't go into such great detail. The Brisa only set forth a set amount of fifteen in order to cover the typical case. And certainly, if um, Certainly, there is an option of a nida requiring an additional tefillah in the case of Asil Kamon Be Lelia, and for a total of 16 cases, for 16 tefillahs. Now, how do we get into this price? So, we were looking for a shita that does not require sfurin b'fonenu. We don't actually have to have verification, a bdika verification, in order for it to be considered sfiras shiva nakim. Now, this price seems to be pretty obvious that. He's going, the Brysa is following the Shita that you don't need Sfirim B'fanenu. Because this Isha never performed any Vedikas. And still, we consider the days as Shiva Nakim. And we treat it as, the, as if she already has partial or complete Shiva Nakim. And we, well, we obligate her to be Tevil accordingly. If you hold that one is required to make Vedikas in our present, we have to actually verify that. There was no dam. Kalahani tefillahs lamali. Why then does the Bryce require to undergo so many tefillahs of Azava? We take in all the possibilities, we take into account all the different options and the afsharis, the possibilities that may have occurred associated with Zutumaziva. Why is that why is that necessary? Since we don't have any Vdikas with Fanenu, so those days don't count at all. Let her just start her Shiva Nakim right now and be tevil once at the end of Shiva Nakim and we save ourselves a lot of work. Let her count seven days from today going forward. Bahadur Titpa and then be Toivel. El Lav it is pretty obvious from this Brisa that the Brisa is following the sheet of Rabbonani, the Amri Loi Bainan Sfurin Lafaneinu. So we have a clear cut Brisa which announces, which states a Chiddush, that we, one is not required to have Sfurin Lafaneinu, although there were no Badikas done. Nevertheless, it, be, it can still be considered um, for the May Shiva Nakiyim, and one is required to be Toivel accordingly. So we have a Raya to Rav. Rav said, I have, a, I have a, a Raya, a Shita, that holds that one is not required to have Shiva Nakiyim 
bifanenu. It is enough to have a partial shiv nekiim together with cheskas tahara. That is sufficient. We have a clear cut brisa which seems to state that halacha. Amalei Rav Acha be Rav Yisro Rav Ashi. Lav terutzik kum tartzinula. Didn't you have to revise the brisa? If you recall, we had a kasha. Rav is kasha from stoyim, and we had to go revise the whole case in the brisa. So once we've done that, terutz ve mahachi. So let's go revise it the following way. Safarti ve nideas kama safarti. Let us tweak the lashon of brisa as follows. They're speaking about Isha who's saying as follows, I was safer, I did a bdika shivanakim, I simply don't remember how many, how many days I was safer. In bime nida safarati, bime ziva safarati. So again, she doesn't know how many days she saw, she doesn't know when those days took place, when those readers took place during bime nida, during bime ziva. But, and here's the punchline, I was safer, I was baidik. I made an actual verification. I just don't remember how many days I was boydik, whether it was one day, whether it was two days, whether it was today, whether it was yesterday. So in that case, Matvil Naisa Tezvat Filais. So certainly we have to be Tevila 15th Filais. Because in this case, there was a Badika, there was an actual verification. It was Fur and Lefanenu. So you have no Raya that there is any sheet in the world which holds that one is not required to have Sur and Lefanenu. Ask the Gemara, Safarti Veni Adas Kama Safarti. One second, hold on. You're saying that she's saying, I counted, I just don't know how many days, right? Now, certainly one day she's definitely counted. She's holding, she comes to us on a Friday and she says, You know, I'm holding Bimei Sfirasi, Bimei Shivanakim, I counted, I'm in the middle of my counting days, I just don't know how many. Certainly today was uh, uh, one of the Shivanakim. So you have to discount something, you have to discount today from the calculation. Meaning, the reason why she was obligated to do sh- uh, so many tefillahs was because we had a concern that perhaps today was her Yay Maria. And therefore she needs to start a Shivana Kim starting from tomorrow and be tevil on the eighth day. Ask the Gemara, well, you have to discount at least today. You have to be sure that at least today she had no Ria. Because she's saying, I'm, I'm in the middle of my counting days. Chash, <laughs> la You have to deduct at least one tefillah on account of today. Says the Gemara, Ela Ema. You must say as follows, Eni adas im safarti, im loy safarti. I don't know if I counted or if I didn't count. And therefore, in that case, it will certainly support Rav's raya. Meaning, we're speaking about an issue who doesn't know anything. Doesn't know how many days she saw, doesn't know when she saw, doesn't know if she counted at all. In that case, we certainly have to entertain the possibility that she hasn't counted at all. And there were no sfur and mafanein, there was no badikas at all, there was no verification. Still know the Brisa says, she's considered as if she has a Shiva Nakim, and we have to be tabled her accordingly. And that will be a pretty clear cut raya that there is indeed a Shita that holds that one is not required to have Sfurim Bifanim. So, in conclusion, let's go back to the beginning of the Sugya. Azav and Azav need to make a Hefsek Tahara. Following that, they need to do Abdika and a Shiva of a Sphira of Shiva Nakim. If they only did Abdikas Aleph, Vizayin, the first and the seventh day, Rabbi Leza holds that is enough. Rabbi Shua says the only days that will count are the first and the seventh. Rabbi Kiva says the only day that counts is the eighth. If he only did a first and an eighth, so according to Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Shua, certainly we only count the eighth day. According to Rabbi Leza, however, there's a machlekes amaroyim. Rav maintains tchilason av b'shein soifon, soifon av b'shein tchilason. One is permitted to make a bdika on day number one and nothing more. As well, if he makes a badika on day number 8, a day number 7, and nothing prior to that, in both cases, it is v'ches Tahara and it is sufficient. It would appear that this is only badiyavit, of course. Now, the Gemara said that Rav is going with the shita that we don't need sfurn lifanenu, and that is the shita of the b'risa, which we just learned, that even if it's not actually verified in our presence, there was no badika done, there is simply a, pres- a presumption that is sufficient to be considered Sfiras Shiva Nikim. Says the Mishnah, Hazov, Hazov, Bahnida, Vayeledes, Vametsura, Shemesu, that they died. Metame and Bemasa, there is still Metame, Tumas Masa, if one is to carry them or an object will carry them. Ad, Shiyomuk, Habasa, until the flesh decays. And the Gemara will expand on the meaning of this halacha. Continues the Mishnah, Oyvid Kicham Shemes, a guy who dies. Now we know a guy has a din of Tumas Zav, the Rabbanon imposed Tumas Zav on a Goy. Now if he's Mace, Tamar Militame, 
he's no more tummy. Continues the Mishnah. Every woman who dies has a dinner of a nida, and anything that she has come into contact with prior to her misa is tummy. We consider it to be a nida. Only if we know for sure, for certain that she was a nida, otherwise she doesn't have tumas nida. Says the Gemara. My b'masa. What does the Mishnah mean that Azav, Azava, Anida, Yeledes, and Metzer, that are Mesu, are still Matame b'masa? Ilayim b'masa, Mamash, we're speaking about an ordinary Tumas Masa. Atu kol Mes, Milayim Matame b'masa. What's so special about Azav and Azava? Every Mes is Matame b'masa. Ela, my b'masa? Be'ev and Masama. We're speaking about a very unique type of Tumas Masa. A Tumas Masa that was associated with a very heavy boulder. A boulder that is immobile, that is meant to be stationary, and a zav and a zava sit on this boulder, and there's an object underneath this evan. Now this is not a typical tumas masa, since it's not meant to be carried, it's not meant to be metalta with this evan, with this heavy, very heavy rock, it's meant to stay in its place. So regarding a mace, a tumas masa that is associated with tumas mace, tumas mace will not have the din of tumas evan and masama. If a kazais of a mace is sitting placed on top of this heavy boulder and there's an object underneath, it will not become tame through the mace. It is not considered as if he is, the object is carrying the mace, since it is not meant to be carried in this manner. However, the cases mentioned in the Mishnah, Azav and Azav and so forth, they have a chumrah, they have a stringency above and beyond a tumas mace. They are indeed metame even the tumas evan masama. Again, Elamai b'masa be'evan masame. Dechsev a hasis evan chada will take a boulder of sumas apum guva. I'll place it on top of the well. So the question remains: Why is that so? Why is it that a zav and a zav who died have an added chumra above and beyond the regular mace? The chayir would seem rational that they are merely considered mason and they have tumas masa like any other ordinary mace. They're not zav and zav anymore since they are merely mason. Says the Gemara, my time, Amar Rav, it is Gzera de Rabbon, Gzera Shema Yisalf. If a Zav will faint, and somebody will, uh, uh, an observer will perhaps think that he died, and will absolve him of this Tumas Evan Masama, he will say, well, now he's not a Zav anymore, he's dead, he's a mace, he only has regular Tumas Mace, and will not apply the din of Tumas Evan Masama in this case. So because of that, Chacham will Gezer, that Every Zav and Zav, even Achar Misa, they still maintain their Tumas Evan Misama until a certain point when it's pretty obvious that they're already Mason. Like I mentioned in the Mishnah, the shear of Yisakal Avasar, that the flesh will come to Kate. Tandem Shor Blaze Amra, another shear, Achi Yibaka, creates until their abdomen splits, and then it's pretty obvious and there's no room for confusion anymore. Continues the Gemara. Oyevit Kechavim Shemais. This aforementioned stringency that is applied to a Zav and a Zava who were mace, that they are Metama, Tumas, Evan, Mesama, they maintain their Tumas, Ziva, that is only regarding a Yid, not regarding a Goy. A Goy who dies, he is tar from this Tuma. Tanya, Omer, Rebbe, Mipnei, Ma, Omru, Ev, Kichav, Meshameis, Tar, Meltam, Ev, Masa. Why is that so? That a Goy who dies is already absolved, he's tired from becoming ta- from being metame Tumas Masa, and again we're speaking about the Tumas Masa which is unique to Azav, the Tumas Evan Masama. What's the difference between a Yid and a Goy? The answer is, a fish ain't Tumas Mechaim Yedivir Torah, Elam Yedivir Seifim, it is merely a Rabbanon, the Tumas Akum, that we impose a Tumas Zav on Akum is merely the Rabbanon, and therefore the Rabbanon limited it only to when he's alive and not La Chamisa, it would seem that we can apply the universal cloud of we are not goyzer, gzera, gzera. We don't do a double gzera. Being that the initial tumma is only gzera rabbanon, we don't add an additional tumma, which would be a result of an additional gzera, a gzera, a gzera. So we limit it only mechaim. Continues the Gemara. Turn around. Shnei masa dvarim sholu anshe alexandria shor b'shuv and chananya. Twelve things the people from Alexandria asked b'shuv and chananya. Gimel divrei chachma. Three were questions of chachma, of wisdom of halacha. Gimel divrei hagada. Three were connected to Hagada to Drush, Gimel Divir Burris, they were nonsense. Three, Divir Derecheretz, regarding Derecheretz, the way of life, good advice. Continues the Gemara. Gimel Divir Chachma, they asked him three regarding Halachis. Hazav, Vahazav, Vahanid, Vahiladis, Hametzer, Shemesu. 
Until when are they still metame tumas masa? As we explained earlier, we're speaking about this unique tumas evan masama. Until when? Until what point? Until the flesh decays. Otherwise, until then, there is a chashash, there's a concern of shemiyas alpha, like we mentioned earlier. Bas meshalachas, mayelukayin What about if a person retrieves his grusha? He remarries his divorcee. Now we know there's a halacha. There's an isra for a person to remarry. Once his wife married somebody else, if he gives a get and his wife wants to marry somebody else, he can't bring her back. So what if he does that and they have a child? What is the status of that child? Is he, she kosher to Lukahuna or not? Can she marry a kain? Me, I mean a kavachayim. Do we apply a kavachayim here? Umma, almanu kain gadol. She ain't isra shav akoyil. Madach. We find almanu who married a kain gadol, who is also to marry a kain gadol, and she went ahead and married, and this this iser is not equal to all. It is a specific iser directed only at a kain gadol. Still, in all, even though it is a very limited iser, but not pogum. If they have a child, his pogum is tainted. He's never so. Zushi sur shav akoyl. Our case, a bas mishalach, somebody who re, who remarries his divorcee. That is an iser that is shav akoyl is equal to all yidden. Ainah din certainly the product of this marriage should not pogum will be pogum. A dilma perhaps. You can say there's a distinction. Almana has a stringency and you can't learn from there. Why? Mala Almana Kain God, she asks from Ishalalas. Almana who marries a Kain God, she herself becomes a Shala, she becomes Nifsalakuna, she can't go marry a Kain. And therefore, certainly her child will have a Psul as well. But in our case, where a person's Mahsagushasa, she doesn't become Nifsal Lakuna, and therefore perhaps her child will not become Pasalakuna. Amalahan he toyeva ve'im b'neo toyeven. There's a pasuk by Machsuk Rishasai which says ki toyeva he. She's a toyeva. She's a damnation. Only her and not her children. We may have a diuk that only she becomes a toyeva, but it doesn't affect her children. And certainly her child is eligible to marry a kain.